Space Station. This is General Raymond. I'll copy over. General Raymond, sir, I've got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. You have it. You have it. Nick, you don't, you do not understand just how happy I am to hear your voice. <laughs> we are here with uh, the Secretary of the Air Force, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, about 5,000 or so of space experts from around around the world, and uh, we're just excited to have the opportunity to link into you live via the International Space Station. I know you've been on orbit just a couple weeks, and I know you've already completed your second spacewalk. What I'd like to ask you is, what was, how did you use the lifetime of training that you've had uh, to to prepare you for this? Uh, pr pr prepare you for your, your uh, time on the space station? And then secondly, what's it like to step outside? Over. Well, sir, you know, that lifelong of preparation, it really just started just up the road from where you're at at the Air Force Academy in the Astro Department there. And, you know, that's where I got my hands dirty for the first time dealing with space, building spacecraft and, and really understanding what it was about. And, and I got to tell you, you know, that started a long, uh, you know, a long career that has prepared me to get to that point. But I got to tell you, the, the view was amazing to come out the hatch and, and to see, you know, to be my own spacecraft, essentially, you know, myself and my wingman out there, whether it was Anne or Christina, looking down at the earth as it glides by and you could see mountain ranges covered in snow and you could see deserts and and to be in in such a austere environment a, a hostile environment where we're just not supposed to be able to live and be able to work and and to go out there and accomplish that mission uh it it, it just was the culmination of a lot of preparation but the thing i took away from it the most was a deep sense of the change in perspective you look down at the earth and, and you see so much in one view and it makes you instantly feel, made me instantly feel smaller. And, and that really hit home the point, the lesson that I learned throughout my Air Force career, which is it's not about one individual, but it's about collective accomplishment and we accomplish things together uh, as a team. And it took thousands of people to make those spacewalks go well. It's taken thousands of people throughout my career to, to help me progress and become who I am. And so it, it's, it's thanks to them, it's thanks to the team that, that we accomplish great things. Great, Nick. I know, uh, Nick, I know your wife Katie is an Air Force officer as well, and your family is back in Houston. How are they doing and are you able to stay connected with them? They're doing great, sir. Um, it, we stay connected. Uh, we have the ability to, to do a, a video conference once a week. I can call them on the phone. Uh, I think she complains that I call her too much now that I'm up here because the time change works a little bit easier than all the time that I spent in Star City uh, where she was usually sleeping when I was awake and I was, I was awake when she was sleeping. Uh, so connectivity has been great and they're, they're, doing, they're doing awesome. I know you, you've taken a couple of spacewalks yourself. I know your team uh, also did another spacewalk yesterday. We've been broadcasting that throughout our headquarters building. What, what work are you doing on the International Space Station? What work are you doing on the International Space Station? Yes, sir. Specifically, these three spacewalks were designed to increase the capacity and, and kind of the life of the space station. Uh, the objective we were out there to do was to, to ch make it possible to change out some old batteries. The, the station is essentially battery powered and we use solar arrays to charge up those batteries. And so it was time to change those out with some new technology. And, and this is a series of many uh, spacewalks that are out there to change into these new lithium ion batteries so that we can keep the station going for a lot longer into the future. Uh, it's a, it's a vital mission. This is the only place where we can play around with zero gravity and science at the same time for a long period of time. And so uh, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's critical to keep this laboratory, this, this asset for the globe, if you will, to keep it operating as long as we can. Well, Nick, on behalf of all of us, first of all, thanks for taking the time to come up today. 
Uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for representing our Air Force so well. Please pass along our regards to your crew members and your partners. Uh, we're proud of each and every one of you. And I have the privilege of having another astronaut on my staff named Two Fish. And Two Fish uh, says that you might be able to perform a little trick for us or something. So if you want to say any closing thoughts and then demonstrate a little what it's like without uh, living on the space station, that'd be great. Thanks. Absolutely, sir. I, th I think the, uh, the thing I'd like to say in closing is just that, you know, for all those that call Space Station home and for all the families, uh, for those that have called the Space Station home or who will call Space Station home, thank you for what all of you do. Everyone sitting in the audience there to the, what you do to support the station, to make this mission possible, whether it's international collaboration or cooperation through our commercial partners, it's really that team effort that makes this, this miracle of a technological uh, feat possible. And it's only with your support that we can continue to be successful like we are. So Two Fish has probably, probably talked up a little to you, sir, a little too much about my abilities up here. I've only been up here a couple weeks, but we're gonna give this a shot. So I am going to demonstrate the amazing things that happen with fluids up here. But to do that, I've gotta get a little, little bit closer to the camera. So up here, things you thought you knew, water, that you've known since you can, your first memories, they do strange things. And so we can play with our food. And surface tension starts to build, be the dominant force rather than gravity. And so it's not uncommon to find us around the dinner table playing with our food moving water around. And finding inter interesting ways to drink it. It's amazing up here, sir. Nick. <laughs> Nick. Nick, th Nick, thanks. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh, you know, Colorado Springs is the home of the uh, US Olympic Committee, and we just took a uh, uh, vote and you got about a 9.9 .9 on that on that maneuver. <laughs> Thanks. Great to see you. Take care of yourself, and uh, we'll be watching. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Space Symposium. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.